everyone, it's Dixon here, and in this video, I'm going to be providing you with a full review of the Sony XM4 headphones. These have been out for quite some time now, and competition continues to grow, including the likes of the AirPods Max recently hitting the market, and so I just want to go through all of the features and my thoughts on if these are still worth buying. Just before we go ahead, for those of you who don't know me, so I'm Dixon, I offer you full reviews of different tech products, just so that you know everything you need to know before you go ahead and make that purchase. So please hit that subscribe button, it really helps me out. Otherwise, let's get into it. Intro please. I really like the design of these headphones. I think they're kind of space age looking, very modern, very minimalist, while still having actually quite a large profile. So you're definitely going to notice these when you place them on your head. But as I said, I think they look pretty cool. They've got that really nice soft matte finish when you touch them, which feels good in your hands. And they're actually very practical. So you can fold these up to be really quite compacted in your hands. So it just makes it very practical when you need to quickly place these down or pop them to one side without taking up too much space. In terms of buttons, you actually only have two buttons on these headphones. So you have the main power button on the very bottom left ear cup, and then you also have the other custom button, which you can change the function of. I've just decided to leave it to the out of the box setting where I can cycle between the different ambient noise settings. The power button I find a little annoying because you have to hold it down for three seconds before it actually turns the headphones on. And this of course is the same if you want to power these down. So it's just waiting around for like three seconds, I think just is a bit of a pain. Otherwise, all of the controls are actually gesture based, touch sensitive on the right ear cup. So double tap with your finger to play or pause a track. You can adjust the volume by swiping up or down, skip a track by going forwards and backwards. And then also you can answer or hang up a phone call if you're receiving them, nice and simple. Personally, I prefer physical buttons. I think it's just easier to access them when you can't actually see obviously to the side of your head, but I haven't had any issues. They work fine without any problems where I've accidentally done something that I didn't want to. So very responsive and I think it works really well. I'm pleased to say that the case offers great protection. So having just reviewed the AirPods Max, it's really good to actually see a proper case included with the headphones. So you can definitely throw your headphones around in this case without any concerns. It has a little netting pocket just on the back if you need to put something in there. And as you open it up, you'll see that everything is housed really nicely inside. So tucked away are the different cables. And that includes things like the charging cable and the aeroplane adapter, which is a nice touch. And you can see how nicely the headphones fit snugly inside that case. So the case is really good and I definitely think it offers fantastic protection to house your new headphones. Connectivity I'll keep nice and simple so it doesn't have anything fancy like the H1 chip offered for Apple products which I'd say is probably still going to be market leading for quite some time. But having said that Bluetooth connections remain stable on these headphones I've had no issues and a nice little addition is that using the app provided you can actually pair it up to two devices at the same time. So for example, I leave these paired with both my iPhone and my MacBook Air. And I've had no problems in terms of switching between both of those. Connect seamlessly, you just wait a few seconds and you get that nice little announcement in your ear that it's connected to device one and device two. So no complaints there, definitely a solid connection offered via Bluetooth. These are very comfortable headphones. You'll notice that when I flip over the ear cups, you're presented with nice, large, soft cushioning, and these do a great job when you place them on your head. And the same applies to the headband going across the top. I've not found that it offers any discomfort. In fact, it's very comfortable. And combined with the fact that these are still relatively light, I don't find myself worrying about being always conscious that they're there on my head, allowing me to remain immersed in that sound experience. I would say that these are a little bit tighter than the likes of my older Bose Quiet Comforts, but I still find these incredibly comfortable. And that, to be honest, is me being quite picky. And I've worn these for at least a couple of hours or so at a time, and I've found that I've been very comfortable doing so. And this includes things like going out and about on the train to sitting here at my desk and doing video editing, that sort of stuff. So overall, really pleased with the comfort on these. 
Out of the box, I found the sound on these headphones far too bass heavy, but thankfully via the use of the included app, I was very quickly and easily able to adjust the EQ settings to my liking. And from then onwards, it was a completely different story. I really love the overall sound that these have to offer. These offer a fantastic soundstage experience, which means you get a good sense of where those instruments are playing, a nice 3D experience, and it allows you to become fully immersed in the music that you're listening to. I tested these with different genres of music, of course, anything from more heavy metal music all the way through to the acoustic stuff. And it does separate sounds well, so things like the mids and vocals don't get washed out by background noise, especially when it comes to those heavier tracks. And when I've been listening to more acoustic music, I found that I've really picked up on more intricate sounds like the drum snares and everything else, meaning that I've been able to hear sounds far more prominently as opposed to my older Bose QuietComfort headphones. Something of note is that the volume on these is actually really loud, so you can actually listen to many tracks on around 40, 45%, and that's probably going to be very loud in your ears, so you don't have to pump up the volume like you would normally. So that perhaps is a plus, meaning that you can definitely go much louder if you find that you're that sort of person. Something of note is that these do offer a 3D audio option, but that's only for supported apps. So for the likes of Spotify, that means that it's not currently compatible. So it's not something that I've tested, but it is a feature that you should be aware of if you are using one of those services. So overall, I'd say that the sound on these is brilliant. And I think that combined with the app, so allowing you to customize the EQ to your liking, this is going to be a great option for many of you out there because you can adjust it on the fly whenever you need to via the app. And I think that means that these can be customized for so many different types of genres according to what your taste is. So a definite recommendation from me in that respect. When it came to testing these headphones with phone calls, so they include regular cellular phone calls and things like Skype video calls, I did find that the microphone to be a little disappointing. I asked people on the end of the line what they actually thought and they said that they can hear me clearly, but it did sound a little bit muffled compared to what you'd get to expect if I was using my phone directly. So in terms of recommendations there, if you're someone that wants these headphones to also offer you a good microphone and you want to use these for lots of calls, then I'd say for that feature alone, it's probably not going to be worthwhile. Me personally, I'm not that worried. It's just going to be for a quick phone call if I'm replying to someone while I'm out and about. So not such a concern for me. These headphones are renowned for their active noise cancellation. And in my experience, they definitely live up to the hype. So I got to test these when I was out walking alongside busy roads and also when I was using them on the train and underground and I really was completely oblivious to what was going on around me. And that was with me listening to music at around 40%. Going back to my earlier point that we don't have to have that volume too loud in the first place. The headphones also adjust the settings according to what you're doing. So if you're sitting, standing or walking near a busy road, it will actually help to adjust the amount of noise cancellation if you choose to have that setting enabled in the app. And that leads me nicely onto the ambient sound setting. So this is where it lets the external noises play back through your headphones. And I don't think these are quite on par with what the AirPods Max offer, but still really good in my experience. And I think you're still gonna get a good sense of where traffic is or when there's others speaking around you. So not quite as fancy, but definitely still a valuable feature to have on the headphones. A cool little feature as well is that if you enable it in the app, you can have this speak to talk feature. So if you just start speaking to someone on the street, maybe you bump into one of your friends, for example, it will automatically enable the ambient sound setting, letting in the voices and external sounds playback through the headphones. So you can actually have a conversation with someone as soon as you start talking. Personally, I prefer just to take my headphones off out of respect, but if that's what you want to use them for, go ahead, it works just fine. So when I loaded up the app for the first time, I was pleasantly surprised by just how many features you're presented with. So you have three main sections. So you have status, sound and system. So on the status page, it's nice and simple. It will just show you currently what you're actually doing. So if you're sitting, standing or walking. And remember this app actually, if you enable it to, will adjust things like the amount of noise cancellation versus ambient noise according to what you're doing. So if you're by a busy road, 
it will adjust it automatically for you, which is a really cool feature. Just beneath that, we have the devices that you're connected to. So you have here the iPhone and MacBook Air in this example. And just to remind you, you can connect it to simultaneously without any issues. Just beneath that, it just shows you the current media that you have playing. And you can simply drag that slider to adjust how much noise cancellation versus ambient noise sound you're going to let pass through your headphones. So really great that you can customize it to your liking. Here you can see speak to chat. I've actually disabled it. So while it's quite a cool feature, if you like to start talking to people out in the public, I found that sometimes it would randomly activate when I've not actually been speaking. Or maybe you're someone that loves to sing along to your tracks. You're definitely going to want to flip that option off. I mentioned earlier that when I got these out of the box, I found that the bass was far too heavy. And here you'll see, this is where you can adjust the different sounds to your liking. So you've got two different custom options, which you can save against, or you've got these predetermined profiles again as another offering. So there is plenty there so that you can actually switch all of the frequencies to your exact liking. And I think this is a fantastic touch, something not offered on my older headphones. A really cool feature is that this has the noise cancelling optimizer. So it will adjust the noise cancellation according to things like your hairstyle or if you're wearing glasses and even the atmospheric pressure around you. So for example, if you're on a plane and that means that it really does enable the noise cancelling to go ahead and do its job. So if you're going to go and jump on a plane at some point in the future, you can actually quickly do that little setup and it will adjust it there and then nice and simple. And I think that's a fantastic little feature to have whenever you need it. I mentioned earlier about the 360 audio. So it does list the different apps that are supported. And right now Spotify isn't one of those. So I've not been able to test it, which is a shame. But what the app does is it will actually take photos of both of your ears and then it enables it to further enhance playback according to your ears, which is kind of strange and cool, I guess, at the same time. So if you do have any of those applications, then this is definitely a feature that you want to check out. The system section is where you can enable pairing of two devices at the same time via Bluetooth and also customize that custom button on the ear cut. I just decided to leave it as it is when I can actually control things like noise cancellation versus ambient control. That works for me because I just don't really care about using the different voice assistants like Alexa and Google. Not my thing. So yeah, as you can probably see, I've just been very impressed. It's very simple and intuitive to get set up and customize everything to your liking. So if you really like the whole customized approach, these are really going to please you in that sense. Depending on your usage, Sony offer around 30 hours of battery life. So obviously that will be reduced if you're heavily using features like noise cancellation. But in my testing, actually, I found that leaving things like noise cancellation on the battery still performed incredibly well. So in my testing, I did a commute, so 30 minutes each way on the train with noise cancellation and then further listening for about an hour at home with noise cancellation, followed by a Skype call, so a Skype video call for around an hour. And that was around 10% usage of the battery, which I think is pretty impressive. Something to note, so on things like the AirPods Max, it's very specific with the exact percentage, on these, it only seems to update every 10%. So you're not going to get the same sort of feedback as you would from some other devices out there. Just something to be aware of. These do offer a fast charging element. So after 10 minutes of charging, you will get five hours of listening. So if you still manage to go through all of that massive battery life, and you're caught short, that should be able to help you out if you need it desperately. But otherwise, I'd say that 30 hours is brilliant. And again, in my testing, I have no reason to believe that that's not going to be the case. I've been very impressed. Overall, I love these headphones. They offer fantastic sound. The noise cancellation is amazing. And the ambient noise setup also works well if you need to get a sense of what's going on around you. And you can adjust all of these settings on the fly with these using that included app. And that includes customizing the sound 
and the EQ according to your own liking. So in that sense, I think it just offers a fantastic package. And it's just great being able to control so much through their app to get these exactly how you want them. These are still fairly expensive. So here in the UK, um, I managed to get these for around £290. Um, I've seen elsewhere they're still a little bit more expensive. So perhaps around $300, I would say, in the US. Obviously, massively cheaper than the likes of the AirPods Max out there. And I think, to be honest, after reviewing the AirPods Max quite recently, I'm more than happy to use these as my main headphones. And I love my music, so for me, that is fantastic that I've managed to find my new pair of headphones as my daily driver. So if you're happy to pay that price at around £290, let's just say about $300, £300, then I think these are a fantastic purchase. I've thoroughly enjoyed these and I really still get quite excited about using them on a daily basis. And these are going to be my main headphones. So I hope you found all of that information useful. I've tried to share as much as I can without going over the top. But if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Happy to answer them. Otherwise, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon.